bring an outline and I normally like to jump in real fast but uh, uh, I think we'll just slow down a minute. It's good to be here today. I'm glad that God will supply your every need and I, I'm glad I'm saved and I'm glad that God had this thing lined up before the foundation of the world. I came here five weeks ago as your missionary but Brother Johns, I appreciate you inviting us back. What an honor it was to just sit with the, the two great men of God. Both of them been preaching over 100 years together. And it is, it, it's a great honor to just sit and hear the Sunday school and hear the singing. Uh, my testimony hadn't changed. Uh, uh, it's the same. Uh, Brother Glass, I tell everybody every time I come, you're my hero. I'm one of Brother Glass's converts. I got saved 30 years ago yesterday. 30 years ago yesterday. March the 6th, 1991. Brother Glass came through Royston, about 120 miles on the east side. He's a legend over there. My wife had gotten saved in February, and I kind of got drugged to church, and I was 33, almost 34. So I went, hadn't been in church in a while, Brought up in church first 17 years of my life. Joined the church July the 23rd, 1969 as a 12 year old boy. Shook the preacher's hand and knew how to play church for a while, but uh, I, I was lost. And Brother Glass came that March the 5th on the on uh, Tuesday night and preached. Brother Glass, I don't, I, I was lost. I didn't have a Bible. And I don't have a clue what you preach. But every word you preach was to me. <laughs> and after the service, my mother, who went on to heaven this past year, she went up to the altar. It seemed like she prayed an hour. And I was sitting on the back to the middle row. And I finally got out of that church that night. But conviction was still on me. I went out to the car that morning on March the 6th, 1991. I had to be in Livonia at 6 o'clock. Went out to the car that morning praying a little prayer. Go, Lord, take care of my wife. And the Holy Ghost got in that car. Amen. And I just fell over the steering wheel. Amen. I believe Avery got saved at home on Wednesday. Our brother, brother Jenkins got saved at home. And I got born again. I hadn't been in a Bible in over 20 years. 
And that night I, I got home from work. My mother had given me a Bible December the 25th, 1988, put a $50 bill in for Christmas. I never opened that Bible. And I got home and I opened that Bible and I started reading 20, 30, 40, 50 chapters a day. And I've been in that Bible 10,957 days. I've been saved 10,957 days. I can't get enough of it. And I, I thank God for the opportunity to come. I'm coming as your missionary tonight. I, well, I'm with the Great Commission Ministries. I started the ministry. God called me in 1993. I went full time in 2007. I, I was preaching 200 services a year. And then God shut the plant down. I was 50 year old and told me to go full time. No salary, no insurance, no nothing. Trust him by faith. And I did. And he had supplied every need. Uh, Brother Glass, uh, after I started a few months ago, I, I started sending uh, prayer letters out. And Brother Glass gave one to Brother Danny. And Brother Danny invited me here. And y'all took me on for support. And then Brother Danny introduced me to Brother Johns. And Brother John so kindly invited me down to White Graves Baptist. I remember it real well. It was on a Wednesday night. And uh, they've been supporting me down there since May 2010. Uh, you've been supporting me since May, May of 2008. A good missionary should know where help comes from. And uh, I, I'm glad to be here. I just want to lift him up. It's all about him. And I didn't bring outline. It's all about Jesus Christ. I'm here to promote him. All we do is promote Jesus. Uh, we, we, Y'all pray we're getting ready to get real busy. I was preaching uh, this time last year. We had 100 saved and done preached 100 services. But uh, this year I can't say that. Uh, my detention center has been closed for a while. Some got open until November. But I got word in Everett County and Stevens County, in the next few days, we should get back at it. And uh, I, I'm in the prisons, yards, and jails every week. We do have prayer meetings. We do pull up, and we do walk around the parking lot, and we do say hey to the inmates, and, and, and we do pray. <laughs> And uh, my homeless center is still open and my nursing homes, we still do that. We just have to go around to the window and knock on windows. You know, that's a way to do it. <laughs> you know, the devil tried to shut everything down with this COVID, but that's, that's a way to do it. Amen. We just need to do it. Amen. So uh, I want to honor God this morning. I want to lift the word up and I want to preach in the book of Philippians, uh, the love letter to the church. And I want to preach in Philippians 4. We start in Philippians 1 today. And we'll go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. I pray for this dear preacher friend that has lost his wife. God, I can't imagine what he's going through. Lord God, I thought I lost my wife in 2012. And by the grace and mercy of God, you let her live and you let her come today. And I, I pray for this preacher. I pray, God, that your grace, God, will be in him. And I, I know he's grieving and I know he hurts. God, been married a long time. And God, I pray you visit him and let him know, God, we love him and we pray for him at Canaan Land. And I pray for Miss Lucy this morning and all the others. I just got word a few weeks ago. I said, where's David? Where's David? And I heard he had went on to heaven. My friend David Ballou. I pray for his family. I understand he got a son maybe up in North Carolina preaching and I pray for his family. Brothers today, God, I pray. God, you touched me. God, let me preach your word. God, I'm nothing today, but God, you are everything, God. Without the touch of God, I, I can do nothing today, but God, I can do all things through you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Philippians 4, I want to lift him up a little bit today. Thank God for the Bible. Y'all still got a Bible, right? Amen. I want to honor his word today. Thank God this is the Bible, God's holy word. God wrote it. God spoke it. I believe it. That settles it. 791,328 words, 31,101 verses, 1189 chapters, 66 books, 39 in the old, 27 in the new. Base it, then stretch it before leaving earth. Read it. Be wise. Believe 
believe it, be saved, practice it, be holy. The Bible said in Revelation 19, 13, he was clothed with a vessel dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Romans 10, 17, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Jeremiah 20 through 29, is not my Word like a fire, and like a hammer to break it rocks in two pieces. Hebrews 4, 12, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than the two every sword, piercing and inviting and sound soul and spirits, joints and marrow is discerning thoughts and intents of the heart. In Proverbs 13, 13, the Bible said, for whosoever despises the word should be destroyed and he that feareth the commandments should be rewarded. Thank God for the Bible. All six yeah. books. First book of the Bible is what? Last book. Revelation. Let's go down the mountain today. Revelation, Jude, Third John, Second John, First John, Second Peter, First Peter, James, Hebrew, Philemon, Titus, Second Timothy, First Timothy, Second Thessalon, First Thessalon, Clash of Philippians, Ephesians, Galatians, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, Romans, Acts, John, Luke, Mark, Matthew. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let me tell you, my eyes, they are sons of Solomon. Let this is Philippians here today. We only got 104 verses we look at about a third of the chapter today. Begin reading in verse 1. Verse 1, we look at verse 6, verse 21, 23, 24. Chapter 2, we read verses 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Chapter 3, we read verses 2 and 3, verses 10, 13, 14. Chapter 4, we read verses uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 17, and 19, and 23. And while you're turning there, I take a drink of this water. Amen. I ain't letting Satan hinder me today. I normally don't get dry. But thank God for the water. Amen. All right, the Bible said, Paul said, this is a love letter to the church. Amen. And I send a love letter to you every month. It looks something like this right here. And uh, I, as you missionary, let you know what's going on, where I'm at. And Paul was sending this letter to the church at Philippi. And the Bible said in verse 6, we read a few key verses. Paul said, being confident of this very thing that he, brother John, which have begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 21. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but brother Glass die is gain. Look at verse 23 and 24. Paul said, for I am a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Chapter 2, look at verse 5 through 11. Remember this verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion to the man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross, wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Brother Perry, look what it says in Philippians 3 2 Beware of dogs. Not talking about false prophets and preachers. It said, Beware dogs, beware evil workers, beware concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Look at verse 10. Paul said that I might know him. <laughs> Amen. He said, I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of the sufferings being made comfort unto the dead. And the Bible said in verse 13 and 14, Paul said, Brethren, talking to Canaan, Brethren, I count not myself to it apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He said, I press towards the mark. That's what we got to do. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 4 through 13, he said, to rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is a hand. 
Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if they're being virtue, if they're being praised, think on these things. Verse 9, the Bible said, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen to me do, and the God of peace should be with you. Verse 10, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now, at the last your care of me hath flourished again, when you was all so careful, yet ye had opportunity not to not speak to respect Back won't I have learned, Brother Glass, whatsoever state I am that would be content. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit to may abound or do your account. Amen. Verse 19, but my God, the young man has testified to that back there on the back row, but my God, to supply all your need according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Verse 23, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Amen. Now if you want to shout, if you want to praise the Lord, amen. Amen. It just scares me to death when I'm in a place where it's real quiet. Amen. Y'all help me out today. Amen. Thank God today. Paul said amen. He said to rejoice. Thank God in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Thank God today that he is the son of God. Thank God he's the son of man. He's the divine teacher, the soul winner. Thank God he's a great position. Thank God he's a bread of life. He's a water life. He's the defender of the weak. He's the light of the world. He's the model supper. He's the uplifted savior. He's the conquered death. He's the first. He's the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the alpha. He's the maker. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For the joy endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. So Paul said we need to rejoice. Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter. My, 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 here we are. God's all in this place on these nice patty pews this morning. Paul's in a prison when he sent this letter. And he said to rejoice. Brother Glass, Brother Johns, and y'all been doing it a long time. I, I, I hear some of these preachers a lot of time, the young preachers preaching on the families and this and that. <laughs> I don't even think you learn how to your kids but to become teenagers. And then after that, when your grandkids become teenagers, amen, you learn how. But Paul said we need to rejoice. You think about it. One day, it's a sunny day in June. One day, it's a gloomy day in November. Uh, when I left your church uh, about 12 years ago, Brother John, that Wednesday night, driving down to LJ, it was snowing. I told my brother Leon, I'm coming up here. He said, watch the snow. I said, there won't be no snow. We got spring weather. It's going to be 80 degrees by the end of the week. Well, I got up by Gainesville, Georgia. I told my wife yesterday, I said, them clouds look kind of snowy. By the time I got to Gainesville, it started snowing. And it snowed and sleeted all the way from Gainesville to, to Dawsonville yesterday. Amen. And then I got up by Jasper's son. It came out. Amen. It became a pretty day. You never know about March. One day it's a sunny day in June. One day it's a gloomy day in November. One day you wife's down at the hospital giving birth. One day you're down at the wedding chapel like Brother Blaine. And then one day you're down at the open grave. Yep. Life's nothing but a vapor. It appeared for a little while to vanish his way, but we need to rejoice. God said in Psalms 118, 24, this is a day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day which the Lord had made. But the Bible said in Psalms 156, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. I don't want to get civilized. I don't want to never get why I can't shout and praise God. Amen. I know sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we're going through trials and tests. But Paul said we need to rejoice in the Lord every day. We need to rejoice. Yeah. And then he said in verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is a hand. Everybody needs to be saved. Yes, sir. My mother died and went to heaven here March the 21st. Last year she was 90. Her American dream was God just let me live long enough to see my three boys saved. She fulfilled the American dream. She, she got saved. She got married. 
she got us in church, and I was the last one to get saved 30 years ago yesterday. 10,957 days, I got saved. My one brother, he's a, well, he was a missionary for 10 years. He's been pastoring for 26 years. Now my other brother might well say he's a preacher. And then I was the last one to get saved. Now my mother was about, I guess she was about uh, 61, I guess, when she prayed that prayer. 60. And God extended her life almost 30 more years, Brother John. Amen. God could have took her. But Paul said we need to let her moderate. I know God's all in this place. But I guarantee you, you can go win a mile or two from this place. And I guarantee you, this place here, probably like Franklin County, I guarantee you, they probably meth and crack and crank and, and molly and drugs and alcohol all over this community. I know God's all in this place today. But we don't have to go far. We don't have to go far. And we need to continue to let a moderation be known. The Bible said in John 1, 6, 7, 8, that was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, a bear witness of light, that all men through him might be saved. Yeah. I believe God can save anybody, anywhere, any condition. And it ain't how much you know. Amen. It's how much you tell him. The day I got saved, I didn't know nothing about the Bible. Amen. But I know I've been saved. Amen. Have you ever been saved? Are you testifying? The Bible said in John 15, 26, but when the comforter is come, whom I was sending to you from the Father, even the Spirit, he should testify on me. You can't help yourself. You can't help but tell somebody. I worry about foes. Paul said, let your moderation be known. In 1830, Charles Finney, he was an atheist. He was a hater of God. Went to Adams, New York to become a lawyer. Walking down the streets of Adams, New York one day. And then women was praying for revival and scared him to death. And he ran off in the woods. And the Holy Ghost followed him. And, not, and saved him that same day he came back into town led 24 people to the Lord in six months he led 100,000 people to the Lord in his lifetime he led a half a million people to the Lord amen we just need to let a light shine in 1942 to 1946 up in Oak Ridge Tennessee the mission was to make the atomic bomb. That's not our mission, gang of land. Our mission is to tell everybody about the Lord Jesus Christ. Scientists say looking for cures for cancer and COVID, but thank God we got the cure for eternal life. We need to be letting people know. Amen. Red, yellow, black, white, all precious in his sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Places I go is the people that most people have done give up on anyway. Amen. God has given me a gift of love to people that most people don't love. That's the one I want to put my arm around. Amen. You say COVID, you can't do much of that. Well, I was in a church the other week running the aisle. I, I used to give a lot of holy kisses and finally the Holy Ghost let me give one. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Oh, Paul, every once in a while he greeted brethren with a holy kiss. Amen. Thank God you go to Home Depot and Walmart. They give you a welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank God. So we need to let a moderation be known unto all men. Paul said, be careful by nothing. In other words, that means don't worry about nothing. Yep. But in everything by prayer. In supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Paul said in Proverbs 16, 3, commit thy works. David said, commit thy works unto the Lord. And the thoughts should be established. You know, if we sit around and watch CNN or Fox News all day long, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I watch about five minutes of Fox News. That's about all I can handle. <laughs> I, I, I can't watch that stuff all day. I try to watch 10, 11 o'clock news to get the weather, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't want all that stuff in my mind. I want to have the mind of Christ. So Paul said, be careful. Don't worry about that. First Peter 5, 7, casting all of our care upon him. Thank God that he cared for us. Yep. Yeah. Amen. We need to learn to do that. Be careful. But in everything by prayer, we need to pray. Brother Johns, I, I listen to your tapes. I, I appreciate your tapes. And I know you're back. You probably can't plow a mule like you could 60 years ago. And you might not can cut wood like you could. But I tell you what, you're preaching better than ever. Amen. I, I listen to tapes. I wear them tapes out. Amen. 
I remember hearing the tapes here a few years ago. Back when Desert Storm, whenever that was. Anybody remember? Yeah. I remember how you said on that tape how the church house was open. I don't know if they all played prayed 20 days, 50 days, or 100 days, but I remember it was seven days a week. Amen. <laughs> What's wrong with praying? I remember the old timers, they used to get out in the woods and, and pray a hundred days for revival. Amen. It's, he's the same yesterday and today and forever. So we need to continue to pray. My mother's American dream, just let me live long enough to see my three sons get saved. And then after I got saved, she went after them grandkids <laughs> and great grandkids. The work of God never stops. God said everything by prayer. I live right across the road, kind of like Resaca, it's kind of like Carnesville, we're kind of small. And I live right across the road from a pilot truck stop, just like you got one six miles up the road. I went out to truck stop a few years ago, took my granddaughter out there. We got a Dairy Queen up there in the Wendy's. And they was, the truck's parked right in front of my house down there. And Brother John's, about the time I started crossing the road, there was a man put a blanket out there on the ground. <laughs> And laid his face on the pavement, kind of like he did in uh, uh, Second Chronicles 7. You remember when the priest laid down on the pavement? Kind of like that. I came back 30 minutes later. You know what he was doing? Still praying. Hey. I said, Brother Guys, he ain't Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I don't know who he was praying to, but uh, you know the Muslims pray five times a day. Yep. So we need to continue to pray. Pray. Paul said, be careful. For but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known. We need to be thankful. Brother Johns, if I, if I go out today, if I die today, it's been a good ride. Here I am in the house of God today, sitting here with two fine men of God that's been doing this over 100 years. God's already saved my soul and changed my life. And Paul said for me to live as Christ, but to die as gain. Amen. Amen. Yes. My, 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 brother Steve. That's right. My, my, my. Think about the one that was out there in that ditch tonight. Think about the one outside recycling that couldn't even find his car this morning. That's right. Anybody ever been there? Some of y'all look like you've been in church all your life. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my. So we need to be praying with thanksgiving. Boy, we got a lot of burdens, but we need to be thankful. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We need to be thankful. Amen. If I didn't have nothing, I'm thankful tonight. God owns it all anyway. Amen. We need to be thankful. Amen. If the bank takes the car, let them take the car. And the house. You don't own it no way. God owns the shoes on my feet and the clothes on my back. He owns the automobile. He put the gas in the car to come up here. Amen. Matter of fact, a fella gave me a gas a cash car from Walmart and I just pulled into Walmart up Calhoun yesterday and filled it up. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Amen. So we need to be thankful here this morning. Thank God I told Brother Glass if he hadn't came by on March the 5th, I would have probably been in hell right now. I know God knows who's going to be saved and who ain't, but that would have been my theory. But I'm glad that God sent the old man of God down that way to preach the word of God. Amen. I hope you got his telephone number today. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Isaiah 55, says, seek ye the Lord, while he may be found, call you upon him while he is near. He's open seven days a week, 365 days a year. Paul said, be careful for nothing. Amen. Boy, you watch Nancy Grace every night, you're going to have some words, ain't you? They took her off there anyway, down my way. <laughs> But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A fellow called me from prison a few days ago, Brother Johns. He'd been down there about eight years. He says he's getting out next year. He was one of my men I preached to in jails. Messed up and had to go back to prison. 
I said, Tim, how you doing? He said, I got peace. <laughs> Woo! Amen. If I got peace in the jail, why can't we have peace in the house of God? Amen. Here you are sitting in a good Baptist church and most of you are going to go eat a good Baptist dinner today and some of you might go take a Baptist nap. Amen. I mean, we got it made. Hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Paul said in Romans 5, 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way you'd have peace with God is to have the peace of God. And the only way to have peace of God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The right. Bible said in Matthew 5, 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Yes. Boy, in my teenage years, I used to be a troublemaker. But thank God I'm a peacemaker. I love everybody. I don't know nobody I don't love. I mean, they people out there might not like me, but the Bible said the ones we, who don't like us, that's the ones we got to pray for. Yeah. People talking about them Democrats, it's your duty here at Canaan Land to pray that them Democrats will get saved by the grace of God. That's our job. Amen. And let God do his thing, right? Yep. How many of y'all believe God can save a Democrat? Amen. Amen. I believe he can save a Republican. Amen. He saved me. Amen. Thank God, the peace of God, the peace is all understanding. So keep your heart in mind. Let's get on that mind. I used to preach on the heart. I, I like to preach on your heart today. I gave my heart to the Lord. You know, when I got saved on March 6, 1991, Brother Guys, Jesus became my Savior. Because he's my savior, there's no way I could go to hell. If I could go to hell today, God's a liar and God don't lie. I've been sealed and I've been bought with a price. But that's my life insurance policy to heaven. But I, I, I made him my Lord. <laughs> the word Lord's in there about 400 times. I know you're saved. I said he's, he's the Lord of your life. Amen. The Bible said in Luke 6, 46, and why? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He wants to be your master. He wants to be your God. At times, Brother John, your pastor can't even help you. At times, it has to be your God. Whatever you need today, you can get it here or you can get it in the car like I did. Or you can get it behind the barn. You know, Paul said in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I don't know if you're saved or lost today, but your mind has over 30,000 thoughts a day. What have you been thinking today? <laughs> what was you thinking on the way to church this morning? Well, pray for the preacher. Your mind is what controls the body. I used to preach on the heart. Now I preach on the mind. I, people in my, in my nursing home, some of them, the minds are good, but some of them cannot get out of bed. Matt Flack, Brother Johns, I quote Philippians 4.13 just about every morning when I start waking up. I quote it, I quote it, about five, and then I ease out of bed. <laughs> I want to have the mind of Christ. Paul said in Ephesians 4.23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind's not saved. Your soul and spirit saved, but your mind ain't saved. I said, your mind ain't saved. Paul said, we need the mind of Christ. Paul said in Romans 12, 1 or 2, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body living and sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, well pleasing. The Bible said, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We have to work on the mind. Some of y'all young folks, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know nothing. Wait till you get my age. Wait till you get Brother John's age. Wait till you get Brother... You still have to work on the mind, don't we? You ever heard the old saying, mind your own business? Yeah. <laughs> Take care of your own mind. Second Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Did you know an unsound mind and an unhealthy mind is an unhealthy body? God says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in us. God wants us to have the single mind. 
That's why Paul said in Galatians 5, 16, This I say, walk in the Spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When I'm walking in the Spirit, my mind is just like Jesus Christ. But when I'm not, double-minded. James 1, 8, a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his... That's a good verse to remember. You know, the devil will play tricks on you doing this COVID and this and that. Whenever you start thinking a little silly, just quote James 1, 8, a double-minded man is unstable. And, and you'll be talking to yourself. Right. Yeah. When you have a fuss with your wife, <laughs> just say a double-minded man is unstable Amen. in all his way. God wants us to have the mind of Christ. Yeah. We got to protect the mind. That's why he said the peace of God which passes all should keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. If my mind was not working, I couldn't have got out of bed. And I couldn't eat today. My aunt, we buried her a few years ago. Her mind went out. And we had to feed her. Thank God for a healthy mind. Amen. And then in verse 8, Paul tells you how to keep one. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if I be in virtue, if I be in praise, think on these things. I was up at camp here years ago, and Ed Ballou, <laughs> he had Sunday school that morning, Brother John, on that single mind. <laughs> That single mind, that mind of Christ. This is your prescription for peace. My wife had some heart tests a week or two ago. We go back to Lord Willem Wednesday to Anderson, South Carolina. And it, the doctor would give her the results and probably tell us how much. <laughs> when you go to the doctor, they examine you, and then they give you a piece of paper called a prescription. And you go down to CVS or somewhere and fill out antibiotic. Yeah. Flipping for weight, that's your antibiotic for your mind. Paul said, whatever things are true, honest, yes, spirit, think on these things. Yeah. I don't care how spiritual you are. I've seen independent Baptists. I've I, I seen preachers I could preach. <laughs> I've seen him nut up every once in a while. <laughs> Somebody pull out in front of you and blow the horn and Shoot a finger. I mean, Lord of mercy. I mean, yeah, amen. We have to work. Work on it. We don't work on our salvation. We have to work on the mind. And the body. That's why we have to read the Word. You know, a five things I like about the Word. In Revelation 1, 3, the Bible said, Blessed is he that readeth his words. And the Bible said, And he that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I dare some of y'all men, I've read my Bible at least twice every day since I've been saved. I have to. Y'all don't know me like I know me. I have to read. I have to get the word in me. I have to stay filled with the whole. My ministry won't run on the flesh. I have to have it. Thank God for the word. That's my medicine. But I dare some of y'all men, when you're up about five or six, some of you have to go to work at 430. I dare you not only to read it, but the Bible said, blessed is he to read it and they to hear it. I, I double dare you. I triple dare you not to read it, but to read it out loud. Amen. Woo! Amen. Hey, something by hearing the word. Faith coming by hearing it. You preached the word, brother, and I heard the word that night. I didn't understand it all, but the Holy Ghost, I knew I was under conviction. Amen. And thank God that the Holy Ghost stuck with me that night. And thank God he saved me the next day. We need to study the Word. 2 Timothy 2.15, study. To show thyself approved to God the workman, and need not be ashamed right to the body and the Word true. We need to meditate on it. Psalms 119.105, thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. We need to memorize it. Psalms 119.11, thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And we need to obey it. John 14.15, if you love me. <laughs> <laughs> please, please keep my commandments. And then Paul, I'm just running through this today. Paul said in verse 9, those things which you both learned and received and heard and seen to be doing to God of peace should be with you. I don't know about you, but I learned some things that morning I got saved. 
My brother and me, Leon, that Baptist preacher, we worked together. I got there at 6 o'clock that morning. He'd been praying for me, Brother Johns. He got saved February 87. And I became his hit man. Boy, he prayed and he prayed. And we worked together. He talked about, boy, I'd get out here and talk, talk about the Georgia football games. But that day I got saved. I walked throughout Shock Hall in Livonia. My brother was over there. I went to say, Leon. And he said, I know. He said, you got saved. I said, God, how did you know? He said, the glow, the glow of the Holy Ghost. I learned some things. And I got home and I opened that Bible that my mother gave me some three years ago. And I opened it and I started reading it. I learned some things. John 14, 26, the Bible said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father has sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. I didn't have a clue what we was going to do today. I'm just your missionary. I just wanted to come if I could wash Brother John's feet or shine his boots, Brother Glass. Not only getting to be Brother John's and then uh, Brother Glass' son-in-law, I said, you tell Brother Glass, give him a hug. He said, he might be here today. I said, my God. Boy, that helped me. I know my wife been smiling from year to year. She ain't got up there yet, but she, she's coming. I learned some things and I received some things. I received the down payment of the Holy Ghost so I can never be lost again. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, who after that ye believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, which is earnest, that's a damn thing, which is earnest of inheritance and the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Those things which you both learned and received and heard, faith coming by here, do James what? 1, 22, be ye doers of the word. And not hear his own. Yes, sir. And then Paul said in verse 10, he said, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care of me had flourished again. Brother Johns, I've been trying to get here for a while. We finally got up here January 31st. I believe every missionary, I send a letter every month. I, I try to at least do that every month, somewhere around the 22nd, 25th. And I believe every good missionary, if he, if he can get here, every church has sports, and I, I believe he needs to try to get there at least once a year uh, to, to, to the church and see the brethren. Paul was a preacher. He, was a, he started this church. He was a missionary. He was an evangelist. But Paul, he loved people. And God, when I met you, I just fell in love with all of you. I, I wish, uh, Brother John, I wish, I wish I could have met you 30 or 40 years ago, like Brother Glass. And I wish I lived within 100 miles closer to you, 25 mile radius. <laughs> and I think I'd just go ahead and move my membership today. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pretty long way across that mountain, about a good three hour drive with the sunshine. But Paul said, I'll rejoice greatly. Old Epiditus had came to visit him. He was in prison. He almost died when he came. He said, I'll rejoice. I'll rejoice. We're going to leave this place rejoicing just because I got to see you. Amen. And we think about you. I rejoice in the Lord that now I let your care had flourish again. When you was all so careful that you lack opportunity. And Paul said, not that I speak the respect of the Apostle Paul, it didn't matter if he was in jail, out of jail. I told you, we was doing 400 services a year, got shut down, we got open back up to November, got shut down again. Done had 75 services canceled this year, but we expecting to get in any time. But even though I can't get inside to preach, and even though my boys are in jail, they praying to get out, I'm praying that I can get in. I was down in Madison County. I was about 150 miles down the road. I, I was down there praying Thursday. We had a prayer meeting. I left there and went on down to the jail. And I heard them out there on the run around in, in the fence out there hooting and hollering. And I walked around that place and started praying. And one of them looked up and said, Brother Dale! And boy, you could hear a new drop. Not because I'm somebody. It's just because a lot of them men has been saved. And after 25, 30 years of plowing in the jails, most of them learned to respect you. And most of them 
would listen to you all night long as long as you love them. As long as you tell them the truth. You go in like you're some kind of hot shot preacher and then leave. It's all about love. They know. They smart. They are smart. And I'm praying that I can get in. And Paul had that this true. And Paul said, not that I respect their respect. Well, I've learned. I've learned. If you want the word, become a missionary. God pays my salary. This church has been sending me a sport check since May of 2008. I can remember when it went up a few dollars. Like I can remember when it went up again. And I'm here to tell you, I appreciate that. But if you want it to go down to nothing, I'd, I'd be fine. I don't work for Canyonland. I work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Canyonland is just using you. God owns the bank. <laughs> God owns the check. If God don't send it in... You know, Paul, it didn't matter if he was dining in, with kings and queens or dining in alleys. In, he learned to be content. Amen. He learned to be content. Yep. God owns it all. Yes, sir. I learned all I need is him. Yes, he has supplied my every need. Yes. Sir, when I became a missionary, the one thing I did think about with no salary, how I could have paid my tithes? And then that first week when $30 came in or $203, I ain't missed the time. <laughs> Amen. The preacher told me a long time ago, if you can't tie on $50 a week when you make $500, you sure God won't tie. God owns it all. Amen. Paul said, not that I've learned in whatsoever state I am. I'm glad you got that dollar. I hope you get $5. Yeah. But if he takes $5 away, be content. Realize that God owns the bank. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Naked came out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord give it the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of y'all young folks, when you get 20 year old and get married and, and 30, you think you got a little something. You ain't got nothing but a car payment, a house payment. <laughs> and then when you get in the 40s, you think you accumulated a little bit. And then when you get in the 50s, you learn how, how can you take care of this stuff. And when you get in the 60s, you start trying to give everything away. <laughs> I had some stuff in my house, everything in my house that we don't need, I've given away. I said, I don't want nothing there except what the kids need when me and my wife's dead and gone. All about stuff in the bill. I ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling. When I went full time as a missionary, I loved the work of garden. I loved to get out in that dirt. But there for a while, I didn't even have time to do a garden. Amen. Amen. I ain't nothing wrong with a garden. I love it. But Paul said we need to be content with the things God sends in. I'm poor as a beggar, but I'm rich as a king. Amen. And it's been a good ride. And then Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. When I was here five weeks ago, my heart was heavy. I just got a call that Saturday night up in Calhoun that one of my shut-ins, Brother Alton, he was almost 97-year-old, had died. And thought I was going to have to do that funeral Monday, but it was Tuesday. And brother, brother Alton, he was a saw miller. He ran a cross-cut saw for all the years. And then he got a job working at a security guard there for 20 years when he was about 50. But boy, he could shoot a flip. And he, he was slim, but he had a muscle. He's showing that muscle. And, and he, was, he made flips. And, and he could shoot a squirrel. One time the game warden stopped and down. I had four or five squirrels. And the game warden said, uh, where's your gun? He said, I don't own a gun. He said, you mean you shot them squirrels with that slingshot? He said, this is a flip, sir. Uh, he said, you got a quarter? He said, that game warden threw that quarter up in there. And he put that rock. He busted that quarter. He could hit three out of four times. He could hit a quarter. I mean, he, 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 when he was a security guard, he, he'd shoot them pigeons off the roof. He said, he said, hold that light on his head. He said, I want to hit his head. Paul, 
I often said what one man can't do, another man can. God made us all different. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. You couldn't have paid me to be a preacher. You couldn't have paid me to be a missionary. Most people didn't even think I could be saved. But, but thank God for Jesus. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Brother, Brother Johns, I guess you just soon have stayed in that mill up there or whatever you worked at. But thank God when God calls you, you have to go. And whatever God calls you to do, be the best step. God calls you to clean this church or take the offering up or uh, shine it. Uh, whatever God calls you to do, be the best at it. Be the best at it. And one of the greatest ministries is standing right in front of the church. When I got saved, I didn't know nothing. I ran the church. I got there an hour early. And I finally learned being a bad if you get there 10 minutes early, you can be one of the first ones. And when I first got there on, the, on a rainy day, I, I'd run out there and take an umbrella. Just glad to be doing something for God. Boy, if you could just shake somebody's hand. Hey, something about shaking your hand. I don't have too good memory. If you can shake the hand and memorize the name, that means something to somebody. And Paul said in verse 17, not because I deserve a gift, but I deserve fruit. That may abound in it to your account. It's all about him. All about him. I'm just running. Verse 19. My God shall supply all your need. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. People ask me all the time. Say Brother Dale. <laughs> I see people all the time. Brother Dale. How, how, how you been doing this? And Brother Dale. How, how do you get by? I, I mean. Who, the, the, the Baptist folk. Have, how do you get by? <laughs> I said, I work for the one that owns it all. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Thank God. My God. Yes. And he said, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I hope to see you next year. I hope to see you sooner. But if I never see you again, the important thing, I pray that I see everyone up, up in heaven. Amen. Brother Glass, if I get there before you do, I'm going to save your seat. You get there before I do, you save me a front row seat. Now, we all going to get there the same day because there ain't no night up here. <laughs> I'm done. Whatever y'all want to do, Brother Isaac, I'm done. I just wanted to come and tell you I love you. I could give an invitation today, and I could get everybody up here. But I'm his missionary, and he's the pastor. And he gives the invitation. If you want to come and pray, whatever you want to do. Brother Isaac, when God gets done, I'm done. Amen.